This video is to teach you how to calculate the chi-square statistic, how to interpret it, and how to apply it to Punnett square problems to figure out whether the expected Punnett square offspring numbers are significantly different than the observed Punnett squared numbers. So why don't you take a moment to read over the problem and I want you to solve it and once you have calculated the percent error of the susceptible and the resistant bed bugs then unpause the video to continue. So at this point you should have uh, calculated that the percent error of the susceptible bed bugs is negative 15 percent and the resistant bed bugs is positive 44 percent. But that begs the question are these numbers significantly different than what was expected? So we can compare our expected numbers of 75 and 25 to our observed numbers, the 64 and 36. Um, so can this difference be explained due to chance alone? Or is there something odd or fishy going on in this problem? Um, so we've calculated the percent error, and that actually doesn't answer that question for us because we might all have our own opinions about what's a significant percent error. Is it 15 percent, 20, 40, 50 percent error? Uh, when do, when's, where's our cutoff point? So in order to solve that problem, you have to calculate something called the chi-square statistic. And you look over here, we have a formula for the chi-square statistic, and you can see that some of the parts are very similar to the percent error, like the observed and the expected numbers. But in the chi-square, what we do is we take the observed minus expected uh, for each uh, category. We square it, divide it by the expected, and then we add all of those numbers together. Uh, I should point out that just like in percent error, we want to use numbers and not percentages. So our expected and observed numbers should actually be numbers and not percentages. Um, and when we calculate our chi-square, we're going to create a table that's very similar to the percent error table. Um, so you can see it here, and we have a row for each of the categories. Um, and what's different, of course, is we're going to have to square some numbers, and we're going to have to add up some numbers. So for this problem, we only need two rows, one for susceptible and one for resistant offspring. And then we can just plug in the numbers we got from our percent error. So it's going to be very similar in the beginning. Right? So you should be able to plug in the observed, the expected, and the observed minus expected. A uh, quick point, uh, these observed and expected numbers, if they are decimals, um, that's, that's okay. So I don't want you to round any numbers. So for example, if you expected 33.33, then just write down 33.33. I don't want you to round it. Um, so why don't we plug in the numbers from the percent errors. And then once you get to the observed minus expected, you know, then you can square that number and then you can divide by expected. Uh, so pause the video um, and um, perform those calculations and then unpause when you're ready to go to the next step. And so we get these numbers, the 1.61 and the 4.84. And then for our final step in calculating the chi-square, we're just going to add those numbers up. So why don't you quickly add those numbers. And so you should have gotten a chi-score of 6.45. So the question is, what do we do with that number, the 6.45? Well, now we're going to compare it to a table called a chi-square distribution table. And we're going to take that number, which is basically similar to adding up all the percent errors. And we're going to compare it to a table to figure out whether it's a significant difference or not. In order to do that, we need to understand some parts of this chi-square distribution table. So the top row are what we call the probability values. So you can see from left to right, uh, from 0.95 to 0 0.90, 0 0.80, all the way down to 0 0.001. Uh, these can be, of course, converted to a percentage. So we can see 95%, 90%, 80%, et cetera, et cetera. So what do these probability values tell you? Well, the p-values are the probability that the difference uh, between the expected and the observed numbers can be explained by chance. So in other words, if, if we have a small difference, a difference between, let's say, you know, 10 and 11, uh, uh, that's a difference of 1. So that number is so small that that difference can be explained through chance. 
But now let's say we had a number of 10 and 1,000. Well, that, that difference is so large that it, it, it cannot be explained through the chance. There has to be some other explanation. So that's what these probability values are telling us. Um, what's good about this is that we actually have a cutoff point. Um, a generally accepted cutoff point is at this 0 0.05 probability value or 5% probability value. So the probability that the difference can be explained through the chance, um, if it goes, if that probability goes above 5%, um, then then we say, okay, you know, it's 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 not a big enough difference between the observed and the expected. So it's a non-significant difference. But if the probability due to chance um, is lower than 5%, then we say, wait a minute, there's a big difference here. The difference between observed and expected is so large that it really can't be explained by chance, this difference, okay? So, you know, it, it, it'll take a few times to, to think about this and to really internalize and understand this, but that's basically the, 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 the intuition there. Um, so in other words, when the difference between observed and expected is a large number, then it cannot be explained due, due to chance. So it's a small probability that it's due to chance. It's a small number. Uh, and so if that number, if that percentage is 5% or lower, then it's, it's, it's a low, it's unlikely that this difference can be explained by chance. In other words, it's a large difference. It's that, lar that difference is so large it can't be explained by chance. So 0 0.05 probability or lower is a significant difference. But then if our p-value goes above 5%, then that means that the the difference between the observed and the expected is really tiny, it's a tiny difference. And if there's a tiny difference, then it can very well be explained by chance. So uh, greater p-values are a non-significant difference. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to look at these critical values, which are all the numbers below the probability values. So we have a bunch of numbers here, and we're going to take our 6.45 chi-square um, statistic and we're going to compare it to one of these critical values to tell us if there's a significant difference. But which critical value do we look at? Um, there's a lot of numbers here. Well, in order to figure that out, we have to calculate something called degrees of freedom. Now, I won't go into explaining what the degrees of freedom means. It's uh, beyond the scope of this course. But in order to calculate it, you need to know the number of categories and you subtract one from that. So we have two categories, right? Our resistant and our, and our susceptible fly, bed bugs, excuse me. So we have two categories. So N is two and degrees of freedom is two minus one, which is one. So we are at the one degree of freedom, uh, which means that we're only gonna look at that first row, the one degree of freedom, okay? And so we're going to find our critical value. And if you look at below under 0 0.05 or 5% probability, you see the critical value of interest is 3.84. So that's our cutoff point to tell us if there's a significant difference or not. So we have a chi-square value of 6.45. Well, if we look at that value, that far exceeds our 3.84. 84 critical value. So our 6.45, think about it, is, is all the percent errors added up, basically. So there's a big difference here, a bigger difference than our cutoff point. And so we know that that difference, that 6.45 is greater than 3.84, so we say that is a significant difference. So in other words, the probability that that difference can be explained through the chance is well lower than 5%. In fact, look, it looks closer to 1%. So that's a very, very, very unlikely um, chance, uh, probability that our difference could be explained through the chance. So again, our 6.45 is greater than 3.84 critical value. So we say there is, a, there is a significant difference. So going back to our problem where we have our susceptible and resistant bed bugs, if we look at our expected and observed numbers, 
we see that the chi-square tells us that those numbers are significantly different. So we did not get what we expected from the Punnett square of two heterozygous uh, susceptible bed bugs. So hopefully uh, that'll help you uh, understand uh, chi-square. Thank you.